the session in the end? James, it was a good session, up by 0.7%, and we did see volumes up as well at $3.9 billion. So that uh, beats both the sessions this week, which was under the $3 billion mark. It did help that it was the end of the month, so that probably helped some volumes going through the market. But of course, with the U.S. market closed for the second day overnight, uh, we didn't see much of a lead from the U.S. We were, though, watching the U.S. futures, and at one point uh, last night, we did see the Dow futures down by as much as 1%. It's been up about 0.1% during the Asian session and that's helped to boost confidence uh, uh, around the region but of course it was the Bank of Japan's move yesterday late yesterday the 11 trillion yuan, uh, yen which will be injected into their as, uh, asset purchase program which really gave markets a lift we've seen a weakening Japanese yen and that's been good news for the Japanese stock market which is up by one and a half percent today and the Korean market also up by 0 0.9 percent in terms of individual stock movements, we saw a number of companies reaching 52-week highs today. And it was interesting to see the scope of the different companies. We saw Ardent Leisure, which of course gave an update at its annual general meeting uh, not too long ago and provided us with um, an, uh, a view into its business and it's been performing quite well. Uh, we also saw the Redex shop reaching a 52-week high, Macquarie Group, Sydney Airports and Telstra. So those defensive stocks still very much in play and uh, Tox. Uh, doing well as well. So there, there's some stocks that have been doing well throughout the last year. On the other hand, though, reaching a 52-week low today is Elder. So continuing to see a sell-off in those shares after the announcement earlier this week that it will be selling off its rural services division. But altogether, a good day for the Aussie share market, up by 0.7% and the last trading day of October. That, that run up to Christmas that we do so often see uh, around the summer of year? It's looking pretty good at this stage. Of course, a lot of it will be dependent on some of the numbers that we see through from the US and China. But another consideration is that this is dividend paying season and we'll see a large number of dividends hitting bank accounts just before that Christmas season. And some of that will find its way back to the market again. So that should help to support the market. So hoping for a Christmas rally. It's been so good uh, the last few months. In fact, since June, the market doing quite well, especially that banking space. But really, we want to see some participation coming in from that material space and to see that we need to see uh, some sort of support coming through from those Chinese numbers. You mentioned the support we've seen in recent times, Julia, from, from the banks, obviously one of the big ones uh, reporting today. We got, had the NAB. Your thoughts on the result and, and the reaction on markets? I don't think this one was a huge surprise, but given that we have seen ANZ and Commonwealth Bank coming out with their full year results and both seeing record profit results, I guess the headline figure was a little bit disappointing. We saw a drop of 22% to $4.1 billion, but of course it's the cash uh, figure that the markets really look at, and at $5.4 billion, that was broadly in line with expectations, just a very slight mix. Miss. If we have a look at ANZ's own guidance, they were saying that they expected it to be pretty close to 2011, and that would have meant a cash profit of between around about $5.45 billion to about $5.5 $5.5 billion. So it's coming just a touch underneath that, but really no huge surprises here given that we saw an update from uh, NAV on the 19th of October talking about an increase in the UK provisioning and how difficult it is in the UK. And it really is Clyde's down and its UK business which dragged down these results. So the return on equity, return on equity down a full 100 basis points or 1% to 4 14.2 percent but still the dividend eight cents higher the final dividend coming in at one dollar and eighty cents and by the end of the day um, the market really not having a huge reaction to NAB's result are uh, down by 0 0.5 percent but nowhere near the reaction we saw in the morning yeah. from um, Steelmakers Australia a consortium made up of a, a number of companies including most notably Noble Group and POSCO of course they've had a, a bid for for Arium they've come out and and basically said they've, they've pulled their offer after Arium rejected the suite in $1.2 billion. Arium shares in the end closing down about 1.9%. It'll be interesting to see how it opens up tomorrow morning. Oh, absolutely. This is going to be one of the stocks which will see the largest movements on the Aussie share market tomorrow. That's because this consortium originally came in with an offer of 85 cents. They've upped that offer to 88 cents, which has been rejected by Arium. And now the consortium <coughs> saying that they're, they're not going to deal anymore. They're not going to talk to Arium about a possible takeover. Now, given that we have seen Arium's share price rising from 54 and a half cents before that takeover bid came through to 78 and a half cents, no doubt there'll be a pretty big reaction on markets.
positive. So we have seen a pretty substantial rise. If we just have a look at Arium's 30-day uh, stock price chart, this is what it looks like. And I've just drawn a line at the level the stock price was at before the takeover offer. And you can see how much it has moved uh, since that takeover offer came through. So there had been an expectation of a Sweden bid. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. In the time that we've seen that takeover offer on the table, we've seen Arium shares up a massive 44 percent. And that's wow. in the space of less than one month. So no doubt when the shares come online tomorrow, we're going to see a pretty steep drop. Yeah, fair bit of room there to fall. And uh, I suppose Arium, it's, it has been a stock formerly, obviously, once it has been under, I suppose, a, well, a lot of pressure. Uh, a lot of pressure because we know that uh, the steel making business and manufacturing side of things has been very difficult. Mm. So Arium uh, previously won steel, now concentrating really on the iron ore part of the operations. But if we have a look at it in terms of the cost of producing iron ore, then it's in one of the highest tiers of cost production. In fact, if we have a look at companies like Atlas Iron in a much better situation than Arium, I think the thing with this consortium was that POSCO thought it could use some of its technologies to make uh, it more economic and cheaper to produce uh, iron ore and help Arium's business and I guess that that was an angle that the consortium was taking and of course Noble probably interested in the marketing rights there so um, a, a, an unusual takeover offer given that there's probably higher quality iron ore companies listed on the ASX but um, of course iron ore companies really receiving a boost that there has been a bit of takeover activity or takeover interest in this area so we'll probably see some of those iron ore uh, miners coming under pressure tomorrow as well.